as a pilot, have you ever wondered why are there two methods to reduce engine thrust during takeoff? Flexible thrust and derated thrust. The purpose of each method is slightly different. Let me explain. Flexible thrust is also known as assumed temperature thrust. It refers to a fuel efficient method used in aviation during takeoff. Instead of using the aircraft's full engine power, the procedures allow pilots to reduce thrust by assuming a higher outside air temperature than the actual ambient temperature. The main objective of flexible thrust is to lower maintenance costs by reducing stress on the engine. It achieves this by minimizing wear and tear, which leads to a longer engine life Additionally, flexible thrust helps reduce fuel consumption, contributing to overall cost savings. On the other hand, derated thrust refers to a permanent or selectable reduction of an aircraft engine's maximum thrust output. Derated thrust involves a certified limit set by the manufacturer. The main goal of the derated thrust is to optimize takeoff performance when the aircraft's takeoff weight is limited by the accelerated stop distance available, especially on contaminated or short runways. While this method improves takeoff capabilities, it also lowers thrust to reduce fuel consumption and engine maintenance costs. Both techniques offer unique benefits to enhance efficiency, reduce operational costs, and extend engine lifespan. But the crucial question is, how can we increase the maximum takeoff weight by reducing thrust during takeoff? Let's start by understanding the concept of flexible takeoff thrust. To grasp how flexible thrust is determined, we first need to look at how thrust changes with outside air temperature in what's known as flat rated thrust. The engine maintains a constant thrust level up to a specific temperature called T ref. Beyond this point, thrust begins to decrease to ensure safe margin on the engine's exhaust gas temperature. Now, let's consider the outside air temperature for today's operation. Based on this temperature, the engine is capable of delivering certain level of thrust. Using regulatory performance regulations, we can determine the maximum allowable takeoff weight for this thrust level. However, if the aircraft's actual takeoff weight is lower than the maximum performance limited takeoff weight, the takeoff can be safely performed with a reduced thrust level while still meeting all the regulatory performance requirements. This reduced thrust is achieved by inputting a higher assumed temperature, also known as flexible temperature, into the engine's control system. By doing so, the engine is tricked into thinking that the outside air temperature is warmer than it actually is, which results in a lower thrust setting and helps extend engine life while reducing fuel consumption. Now, let's talk about derated thrust and how it compares to flexible temperature thrust. For a given engine type, several certified maximum thrust levels for takeoff are available. These thrust levels can be selected directly from the cockpit without requiring any maintenance action on the engine. Pilots can choose the appropriate thrust level depending on the operational needs, and the number of available derate levels varies based on the aircraft type. The reduction in thrust between two derate levels is also specific to each aircraft model. The main point of our topic today how derated thrust increases maximum takeoff weight. When takeoff performance is limited by the acceleration stop distance available, reducing the decision speed, known as V1, can actually help increase the maximum takeoff weight. How does this work? The lowest possible V1 is constrained by the minimum control speed on the ground, known as VMCG. This is the speed at which the aircraft can still be safely controlled on the runway with one engine in operative, the critical engine. 
By using derated thrust, the engine produces less power, which is in turn lowers the aircraft's VMCG. With the lower VMCG, pilots can further reduce V1, allowing the aircraft to achieve a higher takeoff weight while still meeting all safety and regulatory requirements. Please remember that this technique is specifically useful in case where runway length is limiting factor, helping to optimize takeoff performance without compromising safety. Let's take a closer look at one key difference between flexible takeoff thrust and derated takeoff thrust, the flight crew's input and emergency recovery options. When setting up for takeoff, the flight crew selects the appropriate thrust mode using the flight management system FMS interface. For flexible takeoff, the crew inputs a flexible temperature in degrees Celsius. This tells the engine to assume a higher outside air temperature, resulting in a reduced thrust setting. On the other hand, for derated takeoff, the crew selects a derate level, which represent a fixed percentage reduction in thrust. For example, on the Airbus A220, the available derate levels are takeoff 1, takeoff 2, and takeoff 3 each offering progressively lower thrust outputs. Let's discuss the possibility of recovering TOGA, takeoff go around thrust, during takeoff and how it differs between flexible and derated thrust settings. For a flexible takeoff, the VMCG minimum control speed on the ground is calculated using full engine thrust. This means that the flight crew can select TOGA takeoff go around thrust at any time during takeoff if needed. In contrast, for a derated takeoff, the VMCG is calculated using the reduced derated thrust from the remaining engine in case of an engine failure. This calculation allows for a lower VMCG and a slower V1 decision speed. But the problem here, it also limits when toga thrust can be safely used. Let me explain in more details. Toga thrust can only be selected once the aircraft reaches a specific speed. As an example, for the A220, this is when the aircraft reaches its clean configuration speed. Flaps fully retracted. For other Airbus aircraft, Toga can only be selected above F speed, the speed where the flaps can begin to retract. Please put in mind, that these restrictions exist because of the way the VMCG is computed during a derated takeoff. For example, by lowering the VMCG during a derate, the actual V1 decision speed can end up being slower than the VMCG associated with toga thrust. And here is the critical part. If engine failure occurs after V1, but before the aircraft reaches F speed, selecting toga thrust may resulting in loss of directional control as the aircraft won't have enough control authority to handle the higher thrust setting safely. The last point of our topic today, runway conditions for flexible and derated takeoff. Runway conditions play a significant role in determining whether flexible or derated takeoff can be used. Here we go. Flexible takeoff is only allowed on dry or wet runways. This restriction ensures that the reduced thrust setting does not compromise safety on surface with lower friction. Derated takeoff, on the other hand, is permitted on all certified runway conditions, offering more flexibility. However, there is one exception for the Airbus A220, derated takeoff is not allowed on ice-covered runways. Now let's summarize. The benefits of flexible takeoff and derated takeoff differ depending on the operational needs. Flexible takeoff primarily focuses on extending engine life by reducing thrust through the use of an assumed temperature. Derated takeoff, in addition to increased engine life, allows for an improved maximum takeoff weight on runways where takeoff performance is limited by the accelerate stop distance available. 
Naturally, both methods help preserve the engine by reducing thrust, but their applications and advantages are distinct. Now, let me share the final information before I wrap up my video. Can flexible and derated thrust be combined? On most Airbus aircraft, the combination of flexible and derated thrust is not permitted, as outlined in the Flight Crew Operating Manual, FCON. However, on the Airbus A220, it is possible to use flexible thrust with derated thrust combining the advantages of both approaches for specific operations. If you would like to learn more about the derated thrust or flexible thrust, be sure to refer to your aircraft flight manual, AFM, or the flight crew operating manual, FCOM, for detailed guidance. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Your support motivates me to create more content like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.